I'm Brooke Alvier, and this is Crash Course World Historical Figures. Today we're going to be talking about Mary Wollstonecraft, an English philosopher, writer, and advocate of women's rights. In her day, she was called many things, including a hyena in petticoats and a woman with an Amazonian temper, but today she is most often regarded as the world's first feminist. <laughs> Wollstonecraft was born on April 27, 1759 in Spitalfields, London, one year before the Industrial Revolution began. She was the second of seven children to her parents, John Edwards and Elizabeth Dixon Wollstonecraft. Even though she was very intellectually inclined, it was only her older brother who attended formal schooling. Because of her abusive father's poor management of money, the family was constantly relocating and Mary acted as a mother figure to her siblings and also protected her mother from her father's abusive physical wrath by sleeping at her mother's bedroom door each night. These experiences were what shaped her views about inequality, which would later develop into her, her ideas about women's rights. And these things also moved her to declare at age 15 that she would never marry. <laughs> Mary never wanted to marry. Mary left home to pursue a career in writing, but returned to care for her sick mother. In 1782, after her mother died, Mary, along with her sister Eliza and best friend Fanny, began a school for girls in Newington Green, London, but sadly it was forced to close a year later due to financial problems. <laughs> um, inspired by this experience, in 1786, Mary published her first written work, Thoughts on the Education of Daughters. In 1789, the French Revolution began, and Wollstonecraft wrote about current events under a male pseudonym. After two failed relationships, she composed her most famous work in 1792 called A Vindication of the Rights of Women. After that, she began a relationship with William Godwin, and they married in 1796 as Mary was pregnant. Less than a year later, though, on August 30th, 1797, after childbirth complications, Mary died at age 38. After Mary's death, her husband released several pieces of her unpublished writing, as well as a revealing biography of her life, Memoirs of the Author of the Vindication of Women. Inadvertently destroying her reputation because it exposed her past relationships and illegitimate child. Over a hundred years later, with the 20th century advent of the modern feminist movement, her work was exhumed and began to gain attention again, but this time for its message rather than for the neutrality of her unconventional lifestyle. Her vindication of the rights of women emphasized that women are human beings deserving of the same fundamental rights as men, namely having an education corresponding to their essential position in society. And this work became a foundation for modern advocates of gender equality on which to build. Wollstonecraft summed up her mission when she vocalized, Contending for the rights of women, my main argument is built on this simple principle, that if she be not prepared by education to become the companion of man, she will stop the progress of knowledge, for truth must be common to all. She conveyed that women were not inherently inferior to men, but that a lack of education made them appear as such, and both men and women deserve treatment as coherent, equal beings in a society based on reason. That means it's time to check in the secret compartment. Let's go! Today, instead of an open letter, we're going to be reading an open book. And it's called An Interesting Story About Mary Wollstonecraft. In 1789, while in London, Mary developed strong feelings for Henry Fuseli, a fiery and brilliant painter. There was just one problem. He was a married man. However, Mary regarded this as simply a peculiar circumstance. Two years later, Mary suggested to Fuseli's wife that the three of them live together. Fuseli's wife obviously was not fond of this idea. Fuseli thereafter cut off all contact with Mary, leaving her alone and humiliated. The end. Miss Alvier, Miss Alvier, that's not a happy ending. Well, me from the past, the thing is that no matter how hard we might try or how much we might want it, some stories just don't have a happy ending. 
But at the same time, if Mary hadn't faced that rejection and humiliation, she would never have fled to Paris, never become such a prevalent author there, and possibly never have had such a big impact that she has had to this day. So maybe not everything will always go as you plan, but what you end up getting could be so much better. Bonus fun fact, Mary Wollstonecraft's second daughter, Mary Shelley, is the author of Frankenstein. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Crash Course, and be sure to tune in next week. Until then, I'm Brooke Alviar. Bye! <laughs> oh my gosh. Poor management of money. Poor management of money. Jacob! <laughs> okay!